Before we get into today's show, just want to promote the fact that Son of Chelsea has been nominated as a finalist in this year's Football Content Awards taking place at Anfield this November. We have been nominated in the Best Premier League Club Content Creator category and you can vote for Son of Chelsea by two ways. Go to footballcontentawards.com slash voting. Scroll down to the correct category, use the drop down menu and you can vote for Son of Chelsea there. Or you can go to the Football Content Awards official Instagram page find the category post and tag at son of chelsea below and that also counts as a vote towards us thank you for all the support on the channel it's really humbling and the continued support on the content and the interactions it's really appreciated this feels like the culmination of a lot of work if you can share this if you can vote it'd be greatly appreciated thank you Hello there guys, what is going on? Daniel Childs back here again for another show. Chelsea have won. We actually won a game of football. We actually scored a goal, beating Brighton 1-0 last night in the Carabao Cup third round. Yes, you didn't dream it. Chelsea did actually do those things and we actually feel happy about Chelsea. You kind of have to pinch yourself at the moment because I have been so used over the past year, probably a little bit more at this point, of just being quite depressed about Chelsea and being downbeat and being miserable. We have at least until Monday night. In today's show, we're going to look at Victor Osserman, Ivan Tony, Chelsea potentially going big for a striker once again in the January transfer window. We're going to look at the infinite athlete deal, what it means, and also some comments from Gary Neville that have created a bit of a backlash and maybe why Chelsea fans, in my opinion, are taking it the wrong way. If you're new around here, please make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn those notifications on. If you're listening on the podcast feed, thank you so much for tuning in. Son of Chelsea is a part of the Sports Social Podcast Network, and it's an easy way to get the show. If you're watching on YouTube currently, you want to get it on the go wherever you are, make sure on podcast, on Apple, on Spotify, easy way to find the show there if you want to get it in audio form as well. But let's get into the show. Um, So firstly, Chelsea, we, we were going to discuss this and we thought we were going to react to it live on the review show last night, but we couldn't because the draw took a little bit longer to, to get going and I'd stopped recording and, and being live by the time we knew that Chelsea have got Blackburn in round four at home. I mean, Given Chelsea's recent draws, it's actually a pretty decent draw. The fact that Newcastle, after knocking out Man City, now have to face Man United. Uh, West Ham facing Arsenal. Liverpool away at Bournemouth. There's a lot of Premier League all ties, as as you suspect, at this point of the competition. So Chelsea, if they can get through to the last date... You know, it's looking like a pretty good draw for Chelsea, all things considered. So that is a positive along with the win we got last night. We're still waiting an update on Ben Chirwell. Some suggestion from Nazar Kinsella that although it is a hamstring problem, there are hopes that Ben Chirwell has avoided serious injury. We'll wait to see on that one because I've heard that that phrase a lot, avoiding injury, and then we hear, no, actually... He's got a serious long-term injury, we know. So we will just pray and hope that Ben Chirwell is okay. But let's get into it firstly with Victor Osman because this is kind of a a Joe story, non-Joe story, but just in terms of a football story, it's a ridiculous one, really, in terms of a way a club promotes their own player and actually puts down their own player and the potential of legal action from Victor Rossman against his own club. So the Guardian reported about this TikTok video, and if you haven't seen it already, You will find, even though it has been deleted from the official account, it's very easy to find online. It's just quite staggering that this was posted by Napoli on their official TikTok account. But apparently, Osserman could take legal action. Uh, The video subsequently deleted featured a clip of the striker's penalty miss from their 0-0 draw with Bologna on Sunday with an odd sped-up voice dubbed over the top. Osserman's agent, Roberto Callender, wrote on X, formerly known as Twitter, what happened today on Napoli's official profile on the TikTok platform is not acceptable. A video mocking Victor was first made public and then, but now belatedly, deleted. A serious fact that causes very serious damage to the player and adds to the treatment that the boy is suffering in the last period. We reserve the right to take legal action and any useful initiative to protect Victor. So, naturally, this then leads to transfer speculation that Chelsea are 
monitoring Victor Osserman and uh, potentially could be going in for him in the January transfer window. And the fact that Osserman himself has kind of removed any reference to Napoli on his own Instagram account, I know to people who may be on as a debt with social media, don't take it as seriously. It is quite a serious step. You know, it is it, in football circles, as silly as it sounds, it, it is a player clearly responding to an incident, clearly feeling offended. And will this lead to a split in January? But it's going to obviously come at a massive cost because as we know of Napoli, as Chelsea know in recent years, dealing with Napoli is very difficult. And for a player who scored so many goals last season, led them to their first uh, Scudetto in, in, in a very, very long time. Historic player really for Napoli at this point. So to get him out of that club, even with this problem, is going to be difficult. The other clear alternative for, for Chelsea is Ivan Tony has been consistently linked. And even with his ban from betting that means he won't be back in action or at least able to participate in a Premier League game till at least mid-January of 2024. Um, there is belief that clubs are going to go in for him and try to sign him. Even Arsenal now apparently showing interest. Apparently the £80 million fee will force Arsenal to sell fringe players. That's a headline from the Times. I feel both players here are clearly very good strikers. I know a lot more about Ivan Tony. obviously watching him not only in the Premier League with Brentford, but what he did before then, even as far back as Peterborough, he was known as a very, very good goal scorer, seeing him rise up the ranks and now is considered to be one of the best Premier League strikers. Well, at least until the ban, because as I stressed when that ban happened, because these links between Ivan Tony and Chelsea have been going on for a while and Chelsea's supposed plan and interest to sign him, you have to consider the mental physical kind of impact this period is going to have on Ivan Tony. it's very unfamiliar for a for a player basically to effectively be isolated you know some of the harsh kind of rules of this ban and and, and the way he isn't allowed to train with his teammates to be around the Brentford training ground and, and still be around the environment could make him become very isolated he has been quite public with his opinions over this ban and there is a broader discussion over betting in football but in terms of Ivan Tony, I think my question mark would be what is that player going to be like when they return the hope is that he can return to his goal scoring form and prove to be once again a very very good Premier League striker and there may be some competition with Arsenal to try and sign him in January and maybe Brentford feel this is the right time to part ways you can still get a decent fee for him move him on and then reinvest in the squad because it looks like Brentford in their own way might be looking to rebuild their own squad in the upcoming years. So for Chelsea, I, I think Tony feels more realistic. He is Premier League proven, which is something that Pochettino was calling for. The argument that Chelsea's ownership and basically recruitment team did not provide that is, I guess, a legitimate argument. It really is, even if we, we were praising Cole Palmer. You know, we're still talking about a player who doesn't have a lot of Premier League experience and, and is still young. So to find someone in an older age bracket who does have clear a clear track record of scoring goals and physically too is clearly suited to the Premier League is maybe more of a safer bet than, say, signing Victor Rossman because Chelsea have learned in recent years that, you know, you sign players from foreign leagues and although they have thrived in that for, foreign league, can they adapt? I think Victor Osman is a very, very good striker. It's just we have to consider that when talking about Chelsea. And also, as much as we want to see this happen and see Chelsea go out and spend big, which I suspect they will based on the current ownership, um, I think there also needs to be an, an appreciation that we have signed the obvious players in the past. Not just looking at this ownership, you know, Raheem Sterling, we have signed Romelu Lukaku. We've signed Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. We signed Timo Werner in the summer of 2020. There have been a number of players in an attacking sense that have been obvious or ones that everyone kind of knows. And although they had a previous good track record, and we're going to get to this with the Gary Neville point, it hasn't worked out at Chelsea. Why hasn't it? How could we stop that being the case? I want to know your opinion. Ivan Tony versus Victor Osserman. Who do you prefer? Who do you think is more realistic to sign in January? Do you think Osserman might actually leave Napoli? in the January transfer window. Let me know your thoughts on, on it all in the comments below. Moving on now to the Infinite Athlete story. There isn't tons to say about this, but Matt Law broke the story on Tuesday that Chelsea have now got Premier League approval for Infinite Athlete and basically the announcement from Chelsea officially is imminent. The deal is believed to be worth in the region of around 40 million and Infinite Athlete will of course appear on Chelsea shirts, believed to be from Monday against Fulham. So that game against Brighton last night was the last time Chelsea will have a sponsorless shirt, at least this season. 
and the news is a huge boost for Chelsea, reports Matt Law, who have been without a front of shirt sponsor for the first six Premier League games of the season. I criticised the ownership last week in, in a news show in terms of the commercial side, the sponsorship side of not getting this over the line and it's taken a long time and it's still been a mess. Even if I think 40 million for even one season is actually a pretty good deal, it really is. At the same point, we had the stake kind of debacle over the summer where it looked like Chelsea were actually open to signing a controversial betting uh, company and we've heard potential Saudi sponsorship too I, I think that's a battle further down the line and a conversation down the line that we may have to have because I do think in regards to the women's team and what potentially that could mean those are further conversations to be had the deal has been sorted I would just say if for some reason you haven't got a sponsorless shirt go out there and get it now kind of last warning because now that that um, sponsor is going to be on the front of the shirt from Monday you think the club is and with the sponsorship being announced the club will want to have that turnover pretty quickly and even if there is a batch of shirts without a sponsor I suspect that the club shop will have a sponsor on it pretty soon so so be quick if you haven't got shirts without sponsors already because it, it may be the final few days uh, you're able to do so the final thing to speak about is Gary Neville um I try not to, the, the, you know, it's, it's something that I try not to do on this show, just constantly respond to pundits. I rarely do it because I do think there is such an obsession over the narrative in this country, in football and the Premier League, that whole weekend conversations seem to hinge on what Gary Neville or Jamie Carragher has to say. And it all kind of feels a little bit manufactured at times. So Gary Neville said this about Chelsea on the overlap. Um, obviously, they do a lot of fan debates. They do a lot of tactical stuff on there. Uh, but this is a new show, Stick to Football. I mean, it's not that radical, is it? I mean, it's just the kind of the similar names. It's nice to see Jill Scott involved. Kind of a, another conversation show, basically, where they where they say similar things. So, But in it, they did talk about Chelsea briefly. And Gary Neville did say something about Chelsea that caught the attention of Chelsea fans and criticism of Chelsea fans. This is what he had to say, and then I'll give you my thoughts. What I'm saying yeah, is, I think it's cultural. If you th see what's happened at United and Chelsea, there's so many similarities. They're ruining players that have been signed as good players. Mm. Take Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire was wanted by Manchester City, mm. by the way. You know, these players that have been some come to United have been ruined, and coaches have been ruined. And it's happening at Chelsea over the last 12 to 18 months with Potter, with Lampard. Pochettino, we know, is a fantastic coach, but he's struggling at the start as well. Surely it comes culturally from the top. So, I don't agree with everything Gary Neville says, obviously. And I, I do think there are times when he kind of... I feel like with some pundits, because they have such a vested interest or kind of knowledge, obviously, of the club they used to play for, that's not, you know, breaking news, that's not a problem, That that's obvious, right? That maybe sometimes when they say stuff about other clubs, they may not know the intricacies of, of things. I don't expect them to. Well, when you're getting paid what, what you are, I think you should kind of know a little bit more than just kind of throwing out catchphrases. But, you know, they get paid a lot. They make a lot of views. There's a lot of attention on what Gary Neville has to say. That's what we're talking about right here. Um, obviously, the football manager, Bowley quote last year, I, I don't think was the greatest piece of analysis, to be honest. And it kind of stuck since then. Um, I, I think there is a little bit of hypocrisy at times over sort of citing how big of a threat American ownership is in the Premier League, which you can have as a conversation, but then keeping a little bit quiet. And, and I haven't seen that serious analysis by Gary Neville over potential Qatari ownership and what that could mean for Man United and the Premier League. You know, he has spoken vocally about human rights problems and the World Cup and also, of course, the Newcastle sponsorship. He, he's spoken a lot about these things in the past on, on Sky and Monday Night Football. And I know how opposed he is to the Glazers, but it just, it kind of stinks of some hypocrisy. All of that we can talk about and all of that you can criticise. But I do think in this particular case, it is kind of taking the man, not the ball. If I remove Gary Neville from the quote about, I think it's cultural, Chelsea are ruining players who are good players, coaches have been ruined. All right. Ruined is a very, very strong statement. I probably wouldn't go that far because ruined, I mean, Thomas Tuchel, for instance, is, is now at Bayern Munich. He won a Champions League at Chelsea. Um, the one you could say in recent years is probably Frank Lampard, but, you know, Frank Lampard has also struggled at Everton. It's not just a Chelsea thing. So I think that's maybe too extreme, the word ruined. But if I take Gary Neville away from that quote and I just show you that quote, or I put a different name on the quote, what if it's Didier Drogba? What if it's... I don't know, John Terry saying it, probably not John Terry because obviously he works with the club, but it's not the sort of thing he'd say at this current moment. But if it was an ex-player, if it was a, a known face of kind of, whether it's a big Chelsea fan or it's, you know, it's one of us content creators, if I said it, 
I think most of us would nod. Most of us would say, yeah, I think you've got a point there and I think it's quite valid. I think it's kind of the case where because it's coming out of Gary Neville's mouth and people want to criticize him for hypocrisy, they don't kind of take the content of the argument. And I think the content of his argument makes a ton of sense. I think it was right that he referenced Harry Maguire in the sense of Man United because that's very relevant. You know, it's proof of a player who clearly had value, clearly had good things about his game. He's continued to show that Harry Maguire on the international stage where I think he has not done much wrong for England at international tournaments, but then seemingly goes to Man United and looks like an awful player at times. And the fact that that has happened a number of times at Old Trafford in recent years sets a trend and, and makes you ask the question, something deeper is going on here. And it's the same at Chelsea in terms of a number of players who have proven to be good over a number of years, either had a brilliant track record before or have gone at left Chelsea and proven themselves valuable after. You have to ask the question, why does this keep happening? It is a lazy retort to Chelsea's transfer spend problem to just go, they're all crap players. That doesn't make sense. It's illogical. Chelsea are not playing a different sport to everyone else. Why is it that, and when it's been so many examples over a number of years, you can take case by case basis and I can give you criticisms of individual players who I actually don't think were good enough for Chelsea, don't perform to the level. But when you've got such a overwhelming stack of evidence, we have to look in the mirror. We have to be humble to the fact that there is a, a clear problem in terms of strategy, in terms of the environment. Is it an environment that is creating really good players, players that feel confident, players that are improving, feel empowered to improve, right? And and the I speak a lot about the player, club, manager sort of responsibility, right? It, it's a relationship. It can't all always be on the player. It can't always be on the manager. It can't always be on the club. Obviously, there are variables and everyone has their own part to play in this. But I think in, in the substance of what Gary Neville says, Chelsea as a club, have not been doing the best in terms of producing players who are are getting better as they are at the club, especially if they're not from the academy, players that we've bought in. There's been more losses than wins, unfortunately, and that has to change. So those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below on everything I spoke about today. If you are watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Please make sure to share the video around. Vote for the show in the Football Content Awards. Link in the description box below. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. Please do leave us a positive rate and review. Really does help the show out and, and get it to more people. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you again very soon. All the best.